So we'll so we'll catch up on that later. We sure will. Okay. Um, well, hi everybody. I'm um, delighted to be here with all of you talking about one of my favorite topics. Um, I um, have been a student of the Seven Rays for a while, and. I'm excited to kind of share my perspective and what I've learned over the years. Um, again, most of my um, learning about astrology has come through the Bailey work. And um, I've been a student of uh, William Meters and Michael Robbins. So um, that's kind of where my understanding of the rays comes from. I am going to share my screen with you so that uh, you can see I've done a PowerPoint presentation. And um, so the topic today is the seven rays, a divine expression taking form. And um, I am, uh, I use my maiden name for my soul bridging work. So uh, that's Therese Rosignol. And I'd like to start with a quote from Nikola Tesla because it really speaks to um, how I understand uh, the seven rays and spiritual manifestation. And his quote that I chose was, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And that's really gonna be um, a recurring theme as we walk through an overview of the seven rays and then um, sort of diving in to each of the individual energies expressed by, uh, by each of the seven rays. So why seven, you know, why seven rays? And, um, you know, modern, modern physics has concluded that, you know, all is energy. Every form resides within an essential network and pattern of energy. And all energy within form is uh, fundamentally septenary. So that's where um, the, the seven um, rises in, it, in importance. Forms can be described through seven discrete archetypal streams referred to as rays. And the seven streams in the esoteric tradition are said to originate from the constellation of the Great Bear. And each ray is, um, a particular force or type of energy which influences the quality of the forms that are created. So, um, you know, those seven rays inform so much in the way of um, what is in manifestation um, for us as human beings. So we can see the effect of seven in the cosmic order. And um, for those of you who are, you know, the theosophists and esotericists, this is a familiar graphic, um, which are the seven planes and the subplanes, you know, so seven under each and um, going from, you know, the, the least dense of the divine or the logos down to the dense physical plane um, at the, the densest level. So, um, and this is also reflected in our human constitution. So I'd like to, you know, explore the septenary nature of manifestation from an as above, so below perspective. And, you know, above us from a more cosmic uh, spiritual perspective, we have seven emanations, seven spirits be before the throne of God, seven chohans, seven angels of the presence, um, the seven stars of um, Ursa Major, the um, seven sacred planets. So for us, um, that's Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Vulcan, which is understood to be um, in subtle substance between the orbit of Mercury and the sun. And then, um, you know, from the below perspective, how we see seven as a recurring um, um, number of importance in our everyday life, we see it in seven colors of the rainbow, seven notes of an octave, days of the week, the chakras of our, of our own human energy system. 
Seven Wonders of the World, Deadly Sins, Seven Continents, Seven uh, Senses, which um, from a healthcare perspective, we see as the five traditional ones, but also vestibulation and proprioception. So, you know, there's just this uh, real significant importance of the number seven to us in our humanity. So um, I struggled a little bit with this, um, and this has some to do with faux hat, but I didn't want to get into it because it's a topic that I find particularly scary. But I, um, I wanted to connect um, divinity and um, expression of life from divine energy into form because that's really what this is all about. So I'd like us to think about it from the, as the dynamic energy of cosmic ideation, the universal propelling vital force, the link between spirit and matter and the animating principle electrifying every atom into life. And, you know, um, God said, you know, from the Bible, and word became flesh, word was made flesh. So, you know, this energy is both the propeller and the, and the result. So I'm sort of taking it from that approach. And, and you know, divine triplicity of spirit comes into this from um, uh, divine triplicity from the perspective of spirit, consciousness, and form. So, you know, this expresses through the seven divine energy, which we refer to as the seven rays. Their references are present in all ancient scriptures. They're expressed as qualities, and each ray has its own vibration, distinct note, sound, and color. And I um, will offer you a musical piece, typically classical, um, which to me helps to embody the energy of each one of those rays. Um, a musical note and also the color, which color is also vibration, vibrational. And then it's also important to remember that a ray qualifies a form. And we'll be talking more about that as we go through. But that divine tri tri uh, triplicity is um, uh, reflected in the first three rays, ray one, ray two, and ray three, which we refer to as rays of aspect, with the first ray being um, the aspect of will, the second ray being the aspect of love, and the third ray being the aspect of intelligence. And then um, the, the last four rays, ray four, five, six, and seven, we uh, refer to as rays of attribute. And they actually help to define or uh, manifest what is being expressed through the third ray, if that makes sense, or the intelligence aspect. So as we think of these seven rays, um, when I first started learning about the, the seven rays, I, I thought of them much more in linear terms. And it's only been over a, uh, you know, a, a number of years that I began to really um, perceive them more tor toroidal. And um, Alice Bailey puts it pretty well in her book, uh, Letters on, on Occult Meditation, um, somewhere around page 211. It depends on which um, edition you're looking at, but she describes it as seven colors may be regarded as a band of seven colors cir circling and continuously shifting and moving through the planes back to their originating source moving at different rates of vibration. So, you know, each one of these rays can th be thought of as a specific vibrational um, frequency um, and that they are moving up and back and through our system and not just, you know, in a linear way. 
So to go through each of the ray names and their esoteric colors. So ray one is uh, red and its color is red and it's uh, referred to as will and purpose. Ray two is love wisdom and its color is indigo. Ray three is active intelligence and its color is green. Ray four is harmony through conflict and its color is yellow. Ray five is science and concrete knowledge and its color is orange. Ray six is idealism and devotion and its color is um, um, dusty rose. Some use um, the light a powdery blue, a light color blue that's often associated with the Madonna for the sixth ray, but I um, always pretty much go with dusty rose. Can't really tell you why, but that's the one I, I typically use. And then the last ray set, ray seven is um, violet and um, it's called ceremon ceremonial order or magic. So now I want to um, sort of launch into the seven rays in expression. And as we go through them, I'm going to focus on sacred purpose, soul, form, and personality expression. Um, so again, um, re referencing Alice Bailey in es Esoteric Astrology 1, she, um, th this is drawn from her, it's not exact, exact quotes. So um, she describes it as in a human being. And, and I actually, you know, I believe that, yes, it's important from humanity's consciousness to perceive the function um, effect of the rays this way. But we also have to remember that the rays influence everything in, in manifestation, nature, um, animals, countries, our, politic, our political systems. Um, so, you know, think about it as, as a, in a human being, but also be able to um, expand your perception of it beyond into the uh, uh, beyond human consciousness. So she says a ray confers peculiar physical conditions and determines the quality of the astral emotional nature. It gives quality and general tone on the three planes of personality and influences physical appearance. It colors the mind and controls the distribution of energy for the rays through their differing rates of vibration. And it works through one primary center and the rest in a spe specific order. Um, it presents as special gifts, strengths, weaknesses, and limitations, and it governs the method of one's relations to others. So that's um, Alice Bailey's uh, uh, thoughts about it. I wanted to go back to the, the one bullet point where she references works through one primary center and the rest in a specific order. And, and for this, you know, I said where one is polarized. That's my, those are my words. And, you know, my thoughts about this are that, you know, we each have an incarnation where we have goals and objectives of what the soul is trying to accommodate in the form or accomplish in the form life. And depending on where we are on our spiritual evolution, we can tend to be polarized in one aspect of our being. Um, the majority of human humanity right now is polarized in their emotional body. So, you know, that is where the, um, the rays, the energy of the rays work, the rays work um, through that primary center. And then there's a, an order for how the rays express through the remainder of the aspects of, of, of the being. Um, and it would be different if you're polarized in your mental body. Um, but, you know, that's my understanding of what she means in that, um, in that, a particular statement. So um, we'll start to talk here about the first ray, will, purpose, and power. Some people call it will and purpose. Some people call it will and power. I think all three work pretty well. 
Um, so I tend to use all three. The first ray transmits purpose, power, strength, and driving force. It is the energy of the ruler and it uh, relates strongly to government and leadership. Those who initiate the new and are found in positions of power are often animated through the first ray. Creative destruction is also part of this energy. Um, and that's because sometimes the destroyer has to be active in order to um, enable new forms to be born. And we're gonna talk a little bit about an example of that in a little bit further on. Um, and these, uh, those strongly influenced by the first ray often have a strong drive to govern and lead. So the first ray's sacred purpose is the will to initiate. Um, I, I like the image on the left because it's sort of, you know, I imagine it as either, you know, the, the, the word of God um, emanating forth or the big bang. And then um, on a much simpler level, you know, first will is that, you know, first seed bursting through the soil in spring. And that's a, a huge will to initiate new life. So first ray energy, we can describe as being strong, being direct, it has a piercing quality to it, and it is forward moving. Um, it, in, in our human expression, we can see it expressed uh, in, as vitality and the life principle. And the qualities are essence, purpose, assertiveness, centralization, and ultimately synthesis. The first ray keynote is I assert the fact. So, you know, there's this strong assertion driving forward, initiating something new, pushing forward um, some particular thought or concept. Um, the first ray is, um, has a planetary expression through the sun as the life principle, through Pluto as the liberator, so the liberator from form, or the liberator from past um, patterns, and then through Vulcan as uh, the forger of new forms. Its astrological expression comes through Aries as a will to initiate, Leo the will to be, and Capricorn as the will to achieve. So the symbol for um, um, the first ray that I often use is a point or a straight line. You know, th there is no circular movement with the first ray. It is th an energy that gets us from here to there in a very straight and direct path. Um, it the first ray works through our crown chakra and um, I always try to, uh, in each one of these, I try to find a symbolic animal um, from, from, um, from nature to symbolize the energy. And for the first ray, I uh, would put forth an eagle. Music for, uh, for the first ray, the note is do. And if you want to immerse yourself in a musical experience of the first ray, Beethoven's Ninth Symphony is a good choice. Um, so I think it's helpful for us in understanding ourselves, um, you know, to start to understand how the rays are working through our instrument. And um, I've, uh, for each ray, I'm offering an unevolved and an, un and a, and an, evol an evolved examples of that energy. Sometimes, at least for me, it's easier for me to see um, or recognize some of the rays or the rays in me by the unevolved um, quality of it. Um, because, you know, I'm still on the path and I'm not a master and that these um, unevolved or we can even think of them as shadow qualities uh, can manifest in us more um, powerfully sometimes than the more evolved ones. 
So unevolved qualities of an individual expressing the first ray can be that they're power hungry. They can be very dominating. They can be destructive, but um, in an inhumane and unnecessary way. It's not with purpose. They can um, express anger and violence. Um, they can be hard, cruel, proud. There can be qualities of arrogance, willfulness, and separativeness is really important. Over here on the right, I don't know if I can minimize these. Yeah, over here, you know, in on the right is the singular tree. Um, so, you know, it is a so solitary, separative um, entity. But on a more evolved level, um, um, a, a first rate individual will express power, courage, leadership, fearlessness. They will be independent. They will likely have a strong sense of um, purpose, pioneering uh, new, you know, new things into the into their environment, into the world. They can have a strong will. Um, practice detachment rather than separativeness and be very one pointed, have a very one pointed focus in um, what they're manifesting. Um, so I like to um, present you with some um, country um, representatives of some of these energies, the P uh, after the country stands for personality expression and the S, the soul expression, just like us, countries have a soul or just like human beings, countries have a soul as well as a personality. So Germany, Japan, and Great Britain um, demonstrate or express um, first ray through the personality of that country. And India um, has a, is thought to have a first ray soul. First ray individuals can gravitate towards vocations such as um, CEOs or, or um, positions of leadership or authority over corporations or entities. We can see them as dictators, military leaders. They can um, be active in law enforcement and construction as well as demolition. Some historical figures include Hercules, Margaret Thatcher, who's known as the Iron Lady, um, Winston Churchill, Abraham Lincoln, Roosevelt, uh, Franklin Roosevelt, Alf, uh, Adolf Hitler, Mikhail Gorbachev, Caesar, Julius Caesar, and Nelson Mandela all um, have strong first rate energies in their um, persona. And I also like to kind of give you, I'm still working on this a little bit, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm finding quotes that uh, show evolved and unevolved expression of each ray. Donald Trump is a really good one, example of an unevolved, um, you know, first ray. He has a Leo rising and um, a very, so his soul is really not engaged in the personality, his Gemini personality. So, you know, this expression, I am the only one who can make America truly great again, um, you know, uh, highlights that separative, um, arrogant um, uh, energy of an unevolved first ray um, individual. And then there's um, a more evolved expression um, from Mikhail Gorbachev, where, you know, he says, I believe, as Lenin said, that this revolutionary chaos may yet crystallize into new forms of life. So, um, you know, in this instance, it was a destruction of um, the, U the, the um, Soviet Union so that the new Russia could be born. So, you know, he had that vision and he was very likely on the destroyer line of the first ray. So, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the first ray um, um, energy from um, my perspective. So then the um, next is the second ray, which is uh, referred to as the as love wisdom and its color is indigo blue. And consciousness is born of the second ray as the duality of spirit, 
and matter manifest. Love and wisdom. So again, this is to back to that, toward that triplicity of the first ray in, in um, will and the third ray in intelligence. And the second ray is what fills the space between them really. So love and wisdom are two aspects of the second ray and its energy is a source of light, love, magnetism, and relationship. It's an energy of wisdom, sensitivity, and intuition. And those strongly influenced by the second ray have a strong drive to heal, teach, and illumine others. Its sacred purpose is to unite and illumine I liked this image of the moon shaped like a heart because, um, you know, the moon is um, cancer. I'm a cancer sun. So the second ray's energy is round, it's radiatory, it's encompassing, it's magnetic and receptive. Um, in human expression, we see it manifest as understanding, inclusiveness, loving, wisdom, um, someone who's nurturing. And its quality is attraction, magnetic, cohesion, um, and illumination. The second ray's keynote is I see the greatest light. And again, there, you know, there are these two streams or sub rays within the second ray, love and wisdom. Um, it's uh, the, the, the second ray expresses through the sun as the life force and through Jupiter as abundance. It's um, zodiacal uh, expression is through the astrological signs of Virgo as gestation of love and Pisces as saving power. Its symbol is the circle I've chosen um, an owl here um, for the second ray. It could also be a dolphin, but an, a, an owl from a wisdom perspective. Um, and the second ray works through uh, the, the heart chakra. So oftentimes you can see um, in, you know, someone who has a really um, open heart chakra, a lot of second ray energy. The note for the second ray, the musical note is so. And then I chose um, a musical piece called M Marriage D'Amour by Paul de Sonneville. Um, some, some mistakenly think it's uh, Chopin, but um, it's Paul de Sonneville uh, that um, um, composed that piece. So it's, uh, it's actually a very beautiful piece of music. So um, how do we see the second ray uh, second ray energy expressed through an unver un more unevolved personality. Um, you know, they may sense the whole, yet they remain apart. Um, they have a they can have a love of being loved. They can be over. They can have overly. Uh, they can overly attach or have attachment issues. Um, they can be overly sensitive and vulnerable. Lack self confidence. They can be fearly. I mean, fearful, overly, inc overly inclusive, materialistic, and hesitant. Um, from a more evolved perspective, they can exhibit tremendous wisdom and understanding. They can be empathetic, compassionate, have a real love of truth, be patient, inclusive, tactful, and sensitive to the whole. So those are the secondary qualities in personality expression. From a personality uh, perspective, we can see this in Brazil and Canada. And from a soul perspective, the United States and Great Britain. Um, because the United States and Great Britain both have secondary souls, it's understand, understand, understandable why in spite of our revolutionary war and that conflict that we've remained close allies. Some um, vocations that are attractive to individuals um, with a second ray, strong second ray influence in their um, constitution are teaching, the healing arts, rehabilitation, therapy, any kind of therapy really, psychotherapy, um, 
And then some historic figures would be Princess Diana, the Buddha, Mr. Rogers, C.G. Young, Robert Browning, Gandhi, and Oprah Winfrey. So some secondary quotes. I chose Marilyn Monroe's unevolved expression in a statement, give, the, give a girl the right shoes and she can conquer the world. So, you know, that's um, sort of focused on the materialistic aspect of um, the second ray. And then, um, you know, I love this uh, more evolved expression from Mr. Rogers. The older I get, the more convinced I am that the space between communicating human beings can be hallowed ground. So, um, yeah, I, I love that perspective of connection and um, a little bit of a bridging energy there. So the third ray, which is um, the um, ray of active intelligence, um, sometimes called abstract intelligence as well. Its color is green, as I mentioned before. Um, and, and, you know, for the third ray, needs are recognized through this force and drives the intelligent use of form building and all creative effort. The third ray conditions the environment so that the intention expressed by the first ray can manifest. In addition to the thinking human mind, this energy stream is the intelligence of nature, water, plants, and anything in manifested form. Those influenced by the third ray have a strong drive to plan, strategy, strategize, and manipulate resources. Um, one, of my, um, one of my teachers often um, refers to the third ray as a web building ray. Um, and that's why I chose this energy um, because, you know, we, when we think even of the World Wide Web, it is a very third ray energy, um, that network that connects everybody, everyone, no matter where they are. Um, so the third ray uh, sacred purpose is to manipulate and adapt. Um, I know when I first um, started studying this material, I, I was put off by the word manipulate, but I um, have you know, come to learn that manipulation is negative based on you know, it being used in um, selfish ways but that um, some of the most sacred um, spiritual people on the, on the planet manipulate resources for uh, benefit of the greater whole. So, you know, it's really that um, adapt and manipulate um, energy. So, um, you know, rotary motion is a third ray energy. It's circuitous, it's weaving and it's adaptive. We see it's expressed in humanity through networking, manipulation, and being resourceful. And um, the qualities of the third ray, again, are active, adaptable, and creative. The third ray keynote, purpose itself, am I? So that reflects that you know, its intention is um, to be active. Um, its planetary expression comes through Saturn in, um, the, in relation to karma and Earth as the place of the path, which is, um, you know, we don't talk about Earth in astrological terms very often, um, or even in at all in traditional astrology, but in fact, it is the place of all of our paths that um, are in incarnating. Um, the astrological expression comes through the zodiacal signs of Cancer for instinctual consciousness, Libra for balancing karma, and Capricorn for responsibility. Its symbol is a triangle. It um, express it works through the throat chakra, both you know as a re receptive and active energy. And I chose the beaver. You know, we all, all know the busy beaver as um, a, a third ray 
um, expressing through the animal kingdom. So um, the unevolved expression of um, someone with a strong three, third ray energy is in intellectual pride or arrogance. They can be excessively critical. They can be absent-minded. They can think without action. So, you know, a lot of rumination, but no movement. They can be inaccurate with detail. They can demonstrate selfish manipulation, so manipulation of resources for personal gain. They can be devious, materialistic, deceitful, and be really um, hyperactive. Um, cancer is, um, you know, a third ray energy, can have a third ray energy to it. And sometimes I find, you know, busy, 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 and being able to um, stop that energy and um, breathe is, is an important thing for people with a strong third ray to um, practice. So in contrast, we see its expression in a, um, in, a, in a more evolved way as abstract thinking, a capacity for analysis and reasoning, understanding of complex patterns, being mentally agile, a skilled communicator, um, being able to, um, having the power to manipulate for greater good, being adaptable and active. Personality expression through countries, we look to China and France and as a soul, Australia. And um, we see folks who have a strong third ray uh, energy in vocations such as philosophy, economics, um, history, uh, being a linguist and um, um, finance. And then some historical figures would include Albert Einstein, Bill Gates, Isaac Newton, Karl Marx, Aristotle, and Charles Ponzi. So a uh, third ray quotes on, a, on an unevolved expression. Um, I chose a quote from Sun Tzu, who, um, if you don't know, was a German, a German Chinese um, general. And he wrote The Art of War um, and this statement, what is difficult about maneuver is to make the devious route to the most direct and turn misfortune to advantage. And then um, Albert Einstein, who, who I believe had a third ray soul um, and um, he, his quote is, it's not that I'm so smart, it's just that I stay with problems longer. So, you know, we can see that abstract capacity for analysis and, analysis and reasoning, abstract thinking, um, mental agility, and being able to hold, um, you know, an idea for a long period of time and really um, dive into it is um, a feature of Einstein, so. All right, so um, now we'll kind of step into the fourth ray, which is um, referred to as harmony through conflict. It's not harmony and conflict. It's that um, we have to have the conflict in order to get to harmony. Um, as the first of the rays of aspect, the fourth ray can be thought of as the fulcrum of the seven rays. The fourth ray strives to find balance between conflicting energies, holding a place to mediate between opposites. There is an urge to bridge and mediate conflict as a key quality of this ray. And this energy has an intuitive and relational force with, which seeks to evoke love, connection, and understanding. Masters of peacemaking, fourth ray individuals have an innate ability to see both sides of an issue and actively seek to find resolution and common ground. Fourth, fourth ray individuals can also be very creative, dramatic, and entertaining. And these, this can manifest um, through um, creative arts, music, and the theater. So the fourth race um, sacred purpose is to relate and harmonize. Um, you know, there's the symbol of the scales of Libra and um, maintaining balance, 
you know, the law and mediation is also very important from a fourth ray perspective. Its energy is unifying, associative, oscillating, and linking. Um, we see it in human expression as individuals who grow and grow and mature through conflict, and also individuals who are very dramatic. It, the fourth ray quality is um, e one of equilibrium, peace, drama, and at one moment. It's um, the fourth ray keynote is two merge with one. It's planetary expression comes through Mercury and the moon and it's astrological expression through the signs of Taurus for beauty and harmony, Scorpio crisis and conflict and Sagittarius for temperance and moderation. Its symbol is a square. And I chose um, a seal um, for the uh, um, uh, representing the animal kingdom. And the ba base or root chakra is um, where the fourth energy um, enters our, our, the fourth ray enters our energy system. So how do we recognize fourth ray um, qualities in um, personality in the unevolved individual? They can be, they tend to be embroiled in con conflict. They're always struggling and in turmoil, crisis oriented, restless. They can be very indecisive, easily overwhelmed, very dramatic. Um, they can have excessive moodiness, be unpredictable and unreliable, and over, overly eager, eager to compromise. You know, they can sell themselves out in order to avoid conflict. Um, from, um, in contrast, more evolved expression um, is someone who undergoes um, spiritual growth and maturation through struggle and crisis. They're peacemaking, they have a bridging and linking energy to them. They have a capacity to create or express beauty. They're imaginative, intuitive, they love color, they're expressive, they're empathetic, and they have the ability to see all sides. Sorry. <clears throat> Um, a personality, um, a, a country with a personality expression of the fourth ray is India, and then a soul expression in Brazil, Austria, and Germany. The fourth ray, someone with a strong fourth ray influence might seek vocations like mediation, diplomacy, social work, interior design or decoration, entertainment and drama or humanities and the arts. Some strong fourth uh, ray historical figures would include Michelangelo, Shakespeare, Beethoven, Leonardo da Vinci, Kofi Annan of the United Nations, Joseph Campbell and um, Henry Kissinger and Madeleine Albright who were US secretaries of, the, of state and both arguably pretty um, successful. Um, so some fourth ray quotes, um, I'm not saying that, you know, Wayne Dwyer, Dwyer Dyer is unevolved, but the statement represents um, an unevolved expression, conflict cannot survive without your participation. And then, um, Beethoven's quote, music is the mediator between the spiritual and the sensual life. Um, yeah, so him seeing, you know, the vibration of music, again, a mediator between spirit and form. All right, so now the fifth ray, so the second of the rays of attribute is the ray of science and concrete knowledge. Its color is orange. And the fifth ray energy conditions substance, knowledge, and science. It produces light and wisdom through search, analysis, and development, development of ideas, 
which seek to understand form. The fifth ray has a strong tendency to differentiate and investigate. So it can be separative and divisive. You know, sometimes they refer, refer to the energy of the uh, fifth ray as the sword that divides. So it seeks to separate that which is true from that which appears to be true. Um, science and the use of instruments for precision and accuracy and detail are common with this ray. And those individuals influenced by the fifth ray demonstrate power to discover through research, investigation, and experimentation. As the ray of the scientist, there is an urge to understand the whole through examination of its parts. The energy seeks to un uncover the mysteries of life and works through the scientific or you know, even engineering methods um, to find comfort in detail and technical aspects of matter. The fifth ray pur purpose, sacred purpose, is the will to know. And you know, it can include you know, sorting details. Um, and classification um, right into the minutia of um, things and even um, you know, plumbing and electrical engineering and um, vocations like that. So the fifth ray energy is dissecting, sequential, probing and clarifying. In human expression, we see it as invention, creation, experimentation, and discovery. And its qualities are method its quality is methodical, specific, discriminatory, and detached. The fifth ray keynote is three minds unite. And this is in reference to the concrete, abstract, and universal mind. Its planetary expression is through Venus and its zodiacal expression is through the signs of Aquarius for science. Leo for right determination of self and Sagittarius for right determination of the path. Um, its symbol is the five pointed star. I chose the octopus as a representative of the five, fifth ray in, um, in the animal kingdom. And um, the fifth ray works through the energy of the Ajna center. Uh, the musical note for the fifth ray is la, and the music I chose for a fifth ray experience is Bach, the well-tempered clavier. So we would recognize um, the fifth ray energy in an unevolved personality as someone who might be overly mental, ultra rational, overly analytical, someone who requires proof in matter and has excessive doubt and skepticism. They might be very narrow in their focus, like with one, one area of interest only. They can be prejudiced, rigid, have rigid thought patterns, um, uh, lack intuition, or be very un, uh, un, um, um, unsuspecting uh, suspect, of, of intuitional hits, be unemotional and socially awkward. Um, sometimes fifth ray folks can come across as being like nerdy or a little geeky. Um, in comparison to a more evolved fifth ray um, individual expression would be someone who has linear and sequential thinking, a very focused intellect. They can be naturally analytic, accurate and precise, um, work to add, define and separate, formulate questions, um, be very clear in their thinking. They can have mathematical facts faculty, as well as technical, mechanical, and inventive capacities. France is a soul. Um, France, is, France has a fifth ray soul and Austria a, a fifth ray personality. Fifth ray um, is uh, often common in researchers, computer programmers, 
um, systems engineers, engineers, technicians, accountants, and, you know, in medicine, but in medicine that is very scientific and tendence, not tending to be so much the up, per, up in person medical healing um, so much that tends to be more sixth or second, se second ray. Um, historical figures, Katherine Johnson, who, you know, was the mathematical computer for, um, for NASA with the early space program. Um, Louis Pasteur, Jane Goodall, Henry Ford in relation to mass production, um, Alexander Graham Bell, Galileo, and um, Madame Curie are some um, historical figures with strong fifth ray energy. Um, uh, unevolved expression, I chose Jean Chrétien here, who was Prime Minister of Canada for many years. And um, I just chose this because of the proof. A proof is a proof. What kind of proof? It's a proof. A proof is a proof. And when you have a good proof, it's because it's pro proven. So, you know, it's, it's that kind of I'm not trusting anything um, because it's proven. So a distrust for intuitive hits, that kind of thing. And then Galileo, um, his more evolved ex expression of mathematics is the language in which God has written the universe. So I thought if you're interested, I'd like to just stop my share for just a moment and switch over to a little video demonstration here, if I can find it, hang on a second. Um, so what I'm gonna show you is about a one and a half minute computer simulation of Cladney plates. Um, and uh, if you're not familiar with Cladney plates there, um, you know, it's a metal plate that they place, um, vibrate, they put sand or salt on and um, exposed to a vibrational energy which then creates patterns in that form. Um, and um, in, to honor um, the fifth ray technical, I, I, I chose a um, video that is um, simulated. So I'm gonna just open this up and um, play this for you. And you can see here that um, frequency is, is uh, rising as the patterns become more and more complex.
So I hope you, um, I hope you all don't have any seizure disorders there. Um, but uh, let me go back to my screen sharing here. Um, I just think that's a powerful um, demonstration of how, um, you know, the, the influence of uh, vibratory frequency um, affects form. So um, I thought this, the fifth ray would be a good time to show that. Okay, so um, now um, the sixth ray, um, idealism and devotion, its color is um, dusty rose. The sixth ray transmits the ideal for humanity, expressing qualities of inspiration, desire, idealism, and devotion. Because it generates intensity, adherence, and persistence, it is also the energy of warrior or fighter for a cause. All faith traditions express through this ray. Those with a strong sixth, sixth ray in their makeup um, are loyal, aspiring, and passionate. This can produce devoted followers of charismatic and powerful leaders, and there can also be a demonstration of purification and perfection with the energy of the sixth ray. Um, the um, sacred purpose of the sixth ray is a will to idealize. Um, and here we see, um, you know, uh, prayer, devotion, and contrasted with a warrior for the cause. So sixth ray energy um, tends to be upward, uplifting, intense, and unswerving. The, um, in human expression, we see um, it is as, um, someone who's passionate, loyal, selfless, and the warrior for the cause. The quality, um, its qualities are humility, faith, sacrifice, and optimism. Its keynote is the greatest light controls. Its planetary expression comes through Mars as the warrior and Neptune as the ideal. Um, and also uh, Neptune, you know, um, a breakdown in barriers uh, for spiritual access. The ast astrological expression comes through the signs of Virgo as the urge to purify, Sagittarius as vision or aspiration, and Pisces sacrificial love. Its symbol is the pointed star, six pointed star. And the animal kingdom representative that I chose was a dog, you know, who dogs are well known for their devotion to us as pets and um, companions. Um, and the sixth ray uh, works through the solar plexus. Its note is T. I chose Schubert's Ave Maria as a mu musical representation of the sixth ray. And also this is my first foray into more modern um, mainstream music, um, Christina Perry's A Thousand Years. So sixth ray qualities in someone who's unevolved, we see as blind devotion, blind faith and fanaticism, militarism, self-righteousness, someone who can be cruel and depend, have dependency issues. Um, they can be absolute in their thinking. There's no gray. It's either black or white, right or wrong. They can um, express jealous love, extremism, martyrdom, escapism, or perfectionism. In contrast, Someone who's got a more evolved expression of the sixth ray, there's this tendency to be uplifting, devotion, faith, emotionality, um, purity, a power to arouse, inspire, and persuade, um, optimism, earnest and sincere, humble, a, recept a receptiveness to spiritual guidance. Um, access to uh, mystical heights and ecstasy and rapture under the influence of Neptune. Um, country expression on a soul level, um, sixth ray for Italy, which makes sense. That's the home of the um, uh, Roman, um, the Catholic Church. And then from a personality perspective, Russia and the United States who, um, you know, their personalities are certainly in conflict. 
six ray individuals um, can find um, vocational um, uh, comfort in you know things like fundraising, charity, mot motivational speaking or coaching, priests, nuns, preachers, cheerleaders, coaches. And then um, historical figures um, such as Dr. Martin Luther King, Mohammed, Jesus, St. Paul, Joan of Arc, Billy Graham, St. Francis of Assisi, Mother Teresa, and Osama bin Laden. I realized after I did this slide that I don't have anyone in historical figures that are not strongly religious. So that's something I'm going to have to work on in the future um, to keep um, to see what I can find outside of a strong religious representation. So in six three quotes, we see an unevolved expression from Osama bin Laden, I'm fighting so that I can die a martyr and go to heaven and meet God. So there's that emphasis on martyrdom. And St. Francis of Assisi, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. And where there is doubt, faith. Okay, and now last, we have the seventh ray, um, referred to as ceremonial order and magic, and its color is violet. The seventh ray governs the relationship between spirit and matter, and so translates the impulse for creation the blueprint, so that form can manifest according to the divine plan. There's an in inclination to perfect form and manage detail, or I'm sorry, to perfect form and manage detail. So this ray also influences law and order, rule and ritual. Those who build, construct, organize and manifest whatever the form are expressing the energy of the seventh ray. The seventh ray can provoke the keen sense of rhythm and timing and a natural ritualist and the ability to work with deva and elementals. Crystals are actually a great um, example of the seventh ray um, and its sacred purpose is to build and express. The seventh ray energy is rhythmic, cyclic, building and orderly. Its human expression is in systems, ceremony, ritual, architecture, and patterns. And its quality is order, orderly, transformative, and formal. Um, its keynote um, for the seventh ray is the highest and lowest meet. Um, uh, you know, I also think of it in terms of bringing heaven to earth. Its planetary expression is Uranus, and astrological signs for expression are Aries in the emerging arch archetype, Cancer in the principle of foundation, and Capricorn in organization. Um, the symbol for um, the seventh ray is the swastika, um, which is unfortunately been um, uh, co-opted by the Nazi movement and has fallen out of favor, but, um, you know, it is an extremely ancient sacred symbol. Um, in the animal kingdom, I chose uh, termites, and these are the termite mounds in Australia um, that I thought I would offer, and um, the seventh ray works through the sacral center. The note for the fifth ray, oh, fifth ray, no, seventh ray, that's a typo, I apologize, is ray. And I chose um, Maurice Ravel's Bolero as a music that can, a musical piece that can immerse you in the rhythm and order and structure of uh, seventh ray energy. So unevolved uh, seventh ray qualities are the use of black magic for selfish purposes, sex magic, rigid, being rigid and overly structured, having very strict adherence to routines, being dishonest, judging others based on their appearance, um, spiritualism, and being pattern obsessed. In its more evolved expression, we see a power to create order, an ability to manifest, being organized, managing detail, ritual and ceremony, um, which you know is very um, um, obvious in uh, the Catholic church ceremonies, 
very strong seventh ray um, energy there. Rhythm and timing and the ability to en engage angelic and David forces. Russia has a seventh ray soul, Spain, Canada, personality, seventh ray um, vocations are organizer, administrator, architect, choreographer, city planning, planner, systems engineer. And some historical figures, Aleister Crowley, Copper, David Copper, Copperfield, Emily Post, Martha Stewart, Walt Disney, Frank Lloyd Wright, Stalin, and B.F. Skinner. And seventh ray quotes, so an unevolved expression. I was not content to believe in a personal devil and serve him in the ordinary sense of the word. I wanted to get a hold of him personally and become his chief of staff. So that was from Alistair Crawley, who um, really, um, he, you know, was active with sex magic and spiritualism and sort of took a wrong turn somewhere there. And then um, a more evolved expression from Frank Lloyd Wright, form follows function. That has been misunderstood. Form and function should be one joined in spiritual union. So um, here's some resources that I wanted to offer you before we finish up with some questions. Um, uh, please feel free to visit soulbridging.com. Um, I do have a seven race survey there if anyone is interested. Um, we have a couple of programs, um, a short one called the seven soul types. And then uh, so that explores what soul expression looks like um, specific to each ray. And then rayology, living your life through the seven sacred, sacred rays is a much more um, um, larger program um, on recognizing to recognize um, the ray expression in your own being. I draw um, from Esoteric Philosophy by Alice Bailey, and um, one of my favorite um, um, ray, ray, seven ray resources is Tapestry of the Gods, volume one and two by Michael Robbins. So thank you, everyone. Um, and you can reach me at Therese at soulbridging.com. Thank you, Therese. Do we have questions from our audience today? And if you do want to actually speak, you're going to have to come back off of mute. <clears throat> All right, none appearing. Therese, I want to thank you ever so much. And thanks to each of our attendees. Yeah, namaste. Thank you. And for the time that you're able to spend with our topic today, I realize we went about 10 minutes over. But uh, to get your video later today, uh, I'd like for you to check in with us at portland.theosophical.org, and that's our website. You should be able to get in there and get our, um, our link. Uh, donations are appreciated. You'll find a place there in the website, and the instructions are provided for you. Now, uh, future. October 14th, in two weeks, we're going to have uh, a really vitalized personality come in here to talk to you about conscious energetics. And we're going to talk about energy linguistics. How can you speak by using your personal energy when you come into work with a really nice, big, capable crowd, mobilized entire workforce? And your speaker's me. <laughs> I've had a lot of experience with this, so... I'll give you some helpful hints and some tips. So again, thank you ever so much. The website again, just for your knowledge is portland.theosophical.org. And we'll see you in two weeks with Conscious Energetics. Thank you folks. Thank you everybody. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Hi, Angelique. <laughs>